We'll get started in just a minute. Hey. See that with the, with the lights out, we had, we had the same issue in the other room earlier today. <clears throat> uh, we can always turn the lights off. Can you turn the light? Or? There's a switch behind the door. Is it behind the door? Or? Yes. Well, that's, 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 that's a good Halloween it's, atmosphere. It's, right. it's, dark. it's Halloween. Right? It's uh, it'll you'll, you'll probably appreciate the fact that it's dark in just a few moments. So uh, it's uh, well. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Steve Mercier. It's, uh, a lot of you know Babak, uh, <clears throat> right. as, as best as I can pronounce it. And we're here to uh, talk about conversation analysis for student-focused <coughs> instruction. I'd like to thank Babak especially for <clears throat> joining me on this. For <clears throat> uh, the, when, when we were coming together with the plan, uh, sort of, I, I started with a, a talk that I gave le last month uh, for the fa faculty based on based on CA conversation analysis and uh, he's going to sort of add on his area of expertise at, at the end uh, <clears throat> but, but both uh, both areas talking about working with students working instru instruction specifically one on one glad to see so many of the tutoring faculty here and, and as well uh, in as much as that could apply to you uh, Babak do you know who, what, anything about this this guy right here I was wondering who this guy is it's a it, hmm, I, I don't know how that got in there, but uh, I guess <clears throat> we'll just I mean, have to see. Yeah, it's 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 been quite a month, right? It's been quite a couple couple of months. Uh, <clears throat> so just to get started, uh, conversation analysis. You'll see it's got with a big C, right? And 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 A, right? Abbreviated C. C a, it's a it's a particular science, right? Uh, way, way of uh, studying social interaction, an approach to the study of so social interaction uh, which now ov over time grew to include both verbal and nonverbal elements which means that when it's studied often people take vi video recordings of, uh, of, of in interlocutors but we'll talk about recording in, in just a bit it uh, see it was pioneered by uh, Harvey Sachs who uh, when, when he first started out with this uh, was working on a uh, on a suicide helpline uh, for people ca calling in for help uh, for for help and, and he was recording <coughs> the phone conversations and then got to uh, in analyzing those conversations and working with it and also Emmanuel Shagloff and Gail Jefferson whose primary role I believe was to come up with the transcription me method for conversations as you'll see like it can get very detailed uh, one sort of controversial <laughs> Thing about Harvey Sachs in uh, in his approach to in analyzing data was that his philosophy was that I have to I won't know what I'm looking for until I go into the data and try to try try to find it. So he would go through the reams of uh, data on conversations that that he has, um, not specifically looking looking for themes. You'll you'll see in, in just just a moment. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's sort of a different format from say uh, social linguistics or, or, or some other fields in which co conversations can can be analyzed sort of a unique uh, yeah and rightfully so CA transcripts they're they're usually pretty detailed and they're phonetically specific uh, if somebody says the word was right or in a small voice it might actually be transcribed should have put this in quotes as well 
as W U U Z, right? So if you're reading through it, it uh, <clears throat> may not look exactly like English or whichever language is 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 being transcribed. Uh, the transcripts that we'll look at and in in just a moment, right? Uh, aren't qu quite as, as detailed as they would be for a proper CA tra transcript, but uh, um, for purposes of, of readability, you know, we'd have limited time, you know, we'd take much, much longer time. What the heck is this expression right here? I don't uh, <clears throat> So it includes pauses and intonation, the way in intonation is <laughs> overlap when two speakers are speaking at the same time. Uh, you'll, you'll see that in a transcript. See a bit of an example in just a moment. M mumbling. The, uh, like uh, back channeling, all those uh, outside noises that you wouldn't normally want to put in a conversation. Nonverbal elements, not to raise his hand or looks away or think think things like that. If if it's obviously you need vi video for that, and can be done for two or more simultaneous participants. Now, most of us working in an environment, it's. Uh, um, if, if you're working, say, in, 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 in tutoring, that's usually one-on-one, one, possibly, possibly two, I believe, is what can, can happen sometimes, too. Two, two students, one instructor, or uh, might be thinking of something else. Or for um, meetings in, e, in EAP, or you know, even in a, in a classroom for EAP or a, AE classes, any of that. Uh, so here's a typical, an, an excerpt from a, a typical CA transcript, right? Um, if you just want to take a look, quick look at this, right, and see if, the, if there's anything that, that doesn't really make, make, make sense or what, 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 you're not, not sure what it is, we can talk about that. Just take a quick minute, look it over. And the first line of the A, does that make, does that make any sense to you, right? You can sort of see the colon right there in the first word. Oh, right. probably the uh, oh, it's a bit of an elongation. Does uh, right? You can figure out which word that would be, probably right. What is the equal sign? E equal uh, means there's. Uh, I, I it's I believe it's something close to an overlap from one speaker to to the other. Like so they're like simultaneous. Equal at the same time they're saying it. Uh, like that's that's right. Almost as if the other speaker's finishing the sentence. Well, in this case, it's not really the case, but it is. But um, right, I said some. Oh, I know. Possibly they were going to say I could. Is that what do they say? I could or or I mm, that does right? D O S E. Does it make any sense to you? Don't even don't even know who she is. Right? No no T at the end. That's that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, Bit of overlap right here. You can see two speakers at the same time. Underlining an emphasis, kind of emphasis. Oh, that's the one you told me. Oh. So, uh, learning how to transcribe a conversation this way takes takes time, and ever it. Uh, so it's not not exactly something we'll be doing today. The uh, transcripts we'll be working with it are a bit bit more readable at first. Uh, if if you're new new to CA. Just want to give you give you an idea of of how it can take of what it can be like. So C is a, li a little bit different from social linguistics or discourse analysis. There's there's more focus on the talk itself. There's less focus on say gender roles or something like that. Any of the say Deborah Tannen's work you might know, but uh, uh, say men are from Mars, women are, are women are from Venus. You know, men are direct, women are indirect. There, there, there's less fo focus on that and just more on what what's being said. Uh, is is there a context if you're looking at a transcript? Y yes, you you'd say this is the teacher, this is the student, right? You you do know that it, it exists, but there's uh, it's not em em emphasized en as much. Uh, it's more about the about, about the words. What what's the function of the free? A couple of it can also be a key tool in promoting self discovery, which in our learner centered en environment, right? Uh, student focused, right? Uh, can can lead to a journey of self di discovery. This is a very short example of a very short conversation. Right? Um, first pair of parts and sec second pair of parts. Where the first first pair of parts is going to, uh, as you can see here, the 
this question, questions answered with a question, or looks like it's answered, answered with a question, right? But this second question needs to be answered before the first question can, can be answered, right? I think it's sort, sort of in the middle, right? Can I buy some spray paint? Are you 18? No, right? And so this second pair, first pair part, uh, did I get it backwards? No, I didn't. Or there might be a different response right here. Did you watch the game last night? No, neither did I. <laughs> Don't know why you would ask this question at first. It's sort of just trying to, right, kind of leading them into a com conversation. Of course, the second pair part might, might not even be a, a question answer, right? Could also be an answer, answer question right here. Uh, this is dialogue from a from an Oscar nominated film. I'm I'm, I'm not kidding, but uh, <clears throat> but if you if you look at it, right? Which just go, just goes to show you conversations don't have to make c complete sense to be successful in media. You might think that okay, Hollywood script writer study co conversation analysis just to just to be able to, to use it as dialogue in their movies. But uh, you got to tell us what movie. You know. <laughs> yeah, I'd be willing to. I'd be happy be happy to. Just, it's uh, it, if you're interested in it. It's uh, it's from an an animated film from about 2002 2003 called. Rejected by Don Hertzfeld. Uh, yeah, and it was uh, nominated for best animated short. There, there wasn't all that much spoken dialogue in the act, in, in the actual film, but yeah. So even even the first parts in the in the beginning. Tuesday is coming. Did you bring your coat? What's the? It's sort of an exercise in in, in, in linguistics to try to figure out the relations between these. Um, <clears throat> j just as an aside, one linguistics. Course, I, I had the, the final exam was this, right? Uh, customer in a hotel. Are the eggs fresh? The scrambled eggs fresh? Uh, hotel worker. Sir, this is the Royal Hotel. Customer, that's why I'm asking. You know, and, uh, figuring out their purpose of, of, of people speaking. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure if you thought long enough, you could figure out is this a yes or a no to, to going to see a movie, right? Or even something like this. <laughs> this, uh, th this, I think you could make some sense of. Does anybody have any, any ideas? <laughs> yes, go ahead. Well, it's assumed that if you're from New Zealand, you don't have to surf because I guess everyone in New Zealand surfs. Right? Yeah, so so I've heard that's the stereotype anyway. So I've heard, right? So I've heard that. We could come come out with this, right? The. Uh, <clears throat> Does, does, she, does she serve? She's she's from New Zealand. All right. So now <clears throat> I had 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 something planned where uh, for our third presenter, right, who was was there there at the beginning. But I, I do want to make sure that we get that we get to the rest of the uh, some looking at some student transcripts. What would what we're going to do is. Uh, what we're going to do is show you the uh, transcript up here. We've also got the audio recording, right, of a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Uh, got actually for 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 a few students. Uh, take take a look at that. See what see what you can uh, hear about what the what, what the focus is. Um, <clears throat> and then we have a couple more examples. And then Babak will be able to look at it from his perspective as well. So you'll get the best of both worlds, right? The uh, pure conversation analysis. Per Perspective. Uh, you'll get a chance to contribute your your thoughts on it as well, and but let me let me just see here. Okay, we are going to skip through all this stuff. So to the midlife crisis mobile. <laughs> that's a, that's the that's the uh, Sphinx bus vehicle of choice. Except you don't run to it, you you walk because it's the midlife crisis mobile. It's a. Uh, uh, so talking about just briefly talking about speech analysis programs, right? 
uh, for, for recording. Um, if you wouldn't mind just turning, up the, turning the lights on once on more. I think it's a little, little less performing. Uh, when I, I've, uh, what I did last semester, or in the spring, I should say, is I recorded about, I want to say, between 25 and 30 different one-on-one -on -one conversations with students for, uh, for an EAP class about, uh, about a, uh, a paper that they were writing, different, different, different projects, always with their per permission. Uh, this, is the, this is the tool I use, and then so I've got all, all, all this data, and I've just started to delve into it and sort of see, see what I can find, which is what's driving this con conversation. Uh, has anybody here used um, Audacity before? Yeah. Right. How, how do you use it? Yeah. Um, I use it in college, because then you just like, minimize it, and you take notes, and you tape record your teacher's lectures, and then you just press stop, and you can go back if you didn't understand what they were saying and listen to it, look all the words up. Yeah, there's a... And uh, and you could even slow it down. Yeah. With lots lots of other features. I was look, I was curious to see if on this machine here, we had uh, um, right if we could play some of these samples back in Audacity. It's a little bit easier than with the Google Google Media. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think the great thing about Audacity, right? It's a free program. You'll see in, in the past all these recording programs where you could sl slow it down, speed it up, or uh, drill down for analysis was just for billionaires, the the one percent of, of people right here, which includes millionaires, billionaires like these guys. But now anybody can can do it. A couple of other different programs that exist, but Audacity is the best because it's available in multiple languages. It's always uh, it's free. I can send you the link later if uh, if if you're not familiar or ha haven't used it. Works on Windows, Mac, and and Linux. <clears throat> All right, so uh, what we'll do now, right, this uh, Abdullah is a student of mine from, from last spring. Uh, we were working on, on his fi finding a topic for a, a position paper. Well, it's actually, it's a couple, couple of different things. This is after looking at the data, having the, having the conversation, uh, topic change, art, Article advice, meaning sources for his articles, right? Um, but we we want to see if there's anything else he was looking to accomplish while in this. Area. Now, this recording is this particular recording rather is about 13 minutes long, so we won't have time to listen to all, all of that plus all the, plus get 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 your feedback. Um, I'm going to put the transcript up up here on the on the screen, right? Um, so if you know that it's a topic change as well as an article advice, uh, I want possibly l listen, look, try to follow along in the in the transcript, uh, and then see if there's anything else that you think he's d trying to accomplish in in the meeting. Uh, oh, what, one thing I should point out as well. <clears throat> this is why I don't have handouts today, right? Uh, this came from one, one of my class, after one of my classes, I was clearing up all the detritus, right? And, and I found, this is a pathway program, I, what, uh, very beginning of the semester, uh, students had made paper airplanes out of the paper that I had, had distributed. Not to say you, you would have, but it's given me sort of an incentive to sort of cut down and see if there's anything that we can do to make it le less Digital, but if anybody afterwards would like a copy of a transcript that we look over, looked over today, happy to send it to you. Just let, just let me know. All right. Um, okay. First things first. Got to, yeah, Abdul not Abdul Rahman. Okay. One thing you'll find is that the. The, the, the transcript, uh, would you like me to zoom in on that a little bit? Yep? Yes, please. Okay. How's that? And I'll sort of scroll through it at, as we're going. Um, is that, uh, the transcript is a close m match, but there might be some words here. It doesn't include all the overlap sort of things. Um, 
Yeah, so we're looking to see what, what, are, what are his goals. It, is that the topic change, an article out, uh, or looking for advice on sources. Anything else that you can, that you can hear while we open this up? I think I have to oh, turn up the volume. So, let's see, so you had said, uh, did, did you say you up uploaded your outline? Yeah, um, yeah, I did, I actually did. Okay. And I would like to, to change the topic, mm -hmm. because mine, as loud as it goes. yesterday, like, uh, I realized that mine was so, so complicated. So, so I like, so want you to help me out with uh, finding my kind of topic, but in the same area. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the uh, yeah. immigration, so immigration, but not uh, the eligibility mm -hmm. in, yeah, of immigration. Which could be a, that's the stuff of lawyers. Well, yeah, because yeah, yesterday, like I looked up some, like some, I looked up some like information mm -hmm. uh, support my uh, my like like opinions, but mm -hmm. there were a lot of them. They were so. Like so deep and, and and I was like, nah, I can't do that. It's a, uh, but it's sometimes it, it can get very dense. Especially that uh, the February due next Monday, so like I don't want to spend like five days, six days. Right, like, right. You have to be efficient. So yeah. So uh, because of the time crunch, you have to think about something that you feel strongly about. Yeah, that sure. it will be sure. easier to write. So. so uh, uh, like I, like I thought about it, and I want to ask you if I could write about the immigration right now. Like, immigration right now. Yeah. Okay. Like why? Like, uh, what is Trump's uh, uh, perspective, and what, and uh, and what? Just talk okay. about uh, the way he uh, uh, wants to cut down the number of people, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like all the elements. So, one thing to remember is that you must take a uh, position. Yeah. Uh, and I, and uh, surprisingly, like I don't have any problem with what he's doing. Mm -hmm. That's even, okay. That's okay. Yeah. That's, uh, even though, like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm from you know, like, right. whatever. Right. But uh, like, I feel like. It, even if you are illegal, mm -hmm. and if you haven't started the process yes. of being uh, uh, mm -hmm. legal, you should uh, leave, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, it, so, uh, so thinking. So, with that idea, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because there's the thing that Trump is doing—the the travel ban yeah. from certain countries. And well, that's not. not it. Oh, or well, well, there's that, and then there's the uh, the question of. Illegal immigrants. Yeah. Let's say from, well, I'll just say from Mexico, but uh, coming from a, some other yeah. country or coming illegally in in secret person. Yeah, I feel like if, if, if you're uh, if you are like a uh, legal immigrant, mm -hmm. you should be uh, uh, completely uh, welcome. But if you are not legal and if you haven't started the process of uh, becoming legal, mm -hmm. I mean, boy, like. So that, so that could be... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause it right there, right? Okay, so besides the topic change, uh, article advice, is there anything else that you're seeing so far, in the, or hearing, rather, in this conversation, right? Any, uh, any sort of other purpose that you think you might have during the meeting? Yes? Um, maybe validation for his decision? Certainly. Uh, decision for... Uh, Changing. So in what so it's sort of looking for is 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 this okay right? Like saying is it is it is it a va valid change? Yeah, I think certainly. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, what what I what I see upon just looking at this, just sort of I listen to this many times, especially in order to to transcribe it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just. Uh, it's, a, 
is using the meeting as sort of an, an outlet for his views as well, right? And maybe expressing himself verbally where there's not 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 as many opportunities for 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 him to do that, right? One one sort of cardinal rule for my, for me, right? Uh, having student meetings is that I sit down and I just let the students say, say what they have to say at first. I'm sure that's uh, that's true for many of you as well, right? Uh, just getting the Letting the, the student ex express your their ideas rather. Uh, another student whose transcript we might see right here. It's uh, you can see that her word count is it is quite a bit higher than than mine, especially in the first few minutes of the conversation. Right. Um, okay. I was just looking at the clock. The, not as if you're okay. No. It's a <clears throat> just 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 to see. Right. If if you were to go up like f further in, into the co conversation, I think it takes about f seven to ten minutes before we start talking about the actual paper. I mean, he's uh, sort of talk about counter argument, but then o over here once again, right, talking about the fact that he's Saudi and that the whole <coughs> issue, uh, what, everything he went through to get back to the states, right, is just sort of giving his. Uh, Expressing his 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 views on that, right? Just to see if that's part part of his paper, right? Uh, like boss, chill out, right? Like it keeps it t talk, talking about Trump for the for the whole thing, right? Um, so I think uh, okay. Once again, this this uh, transcript is not as nearly as detailed. Uh, I was. To, uh, as, as it would be for a true CA tra transcript, but uh, but it's this, this is how, how you might start it. <laughs> this is how, how you might start, might start something. Um, okay, now speaking of identity, right, or per personal identity, I think uh, that's something that you had focused on, right, with what you would when you would come up with. Uh, uh, you, your take when you looked at, at this transcript. Would you like to say a few things? Then I'll 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 jump in as necessary or yeah. it, as necessary. Excellent. All right. Let's go back to the PowerPoint, and we'll come back to that one in, in just just a bit. Okay. So what I did in this set of data was looking at the data from a qualitative perspective, postmodernist. So you know we had structuralists around for many years and problem is that they're prescriptive, so as for language or any other thing, like identity, they prescribe a set of things, that this is a set of formal uh, symbols in language, and you have to learn like this, you have to add ED over there, you have to do present tense here, but here, we try to define it as it is, rather than prescribe it, we describe it, so to that end, uh, I did a qualitative look at the data, so I used the uh, Open coding, in open coding, uh, you process, you explore as much as you can, you break it down into a set of information. And then then you do axial coding. So in axial coding, you review your information. Either you watch it or better to read your transcript as many times as possible so that different themes emerge that are meaningful to you. So it might be different from you to me, like I'm interested in identity, L1 identity, academic identity, and you might be interested in something else. So my themes might be quite different from your themes, and the last uh, and the last uh, uh, stage we go to selective coding. Now you can select the codes that you want to work with. So when I was looking at the data, I turned to like Spivak, like Foucault, uh, like Deleuze, those post structuralists. So in that sense, I tried to pick the themes that are that have strong links with these philosophers, post-structuralist philosophers, so that I can find something and explore uh, stuff out of that. So here, uh, I'm going to talk about Spivak. Spivak is from, originally is from India. She is a post-colonialism philosopher. So she thinks and talks about margin and the center. So if you have a student here at Intu, you know that they are coming from the Middle East predominantly. And they have certain characteristics and identity bringing with themselves in. So they might be at this right at the center back home, but as soon as they come at Intu, they are sort of marginalizing this teaching system. Not only here at Intu, but any other academic settings. 
they go, they will uh, resign uh, uh, at, the, at the margin rather than staying at the center. So one of them was, I want you to help me out with another topics, same area, immigration, but not eligibility. So this app students was emphasizing that there are many countries on their band, but my country, that was number one, trying to push himself into the center. And the second thing uh, was that I'm here legally, but there are many people who are here illegally, and we should stop them, we should ban them, sort of agreeing with Mr. President of America, so that he can stay uh, in the center. One more thing is that uh, Stephen is, if you go back to oh, yes, slide, Stephen is, is uh, right at the center here in America. He's a white American. He's the teacher at Intu, so he's residing, standing right at the center. So me as a student try to sneak myself into the center. So he was sort of disagreeing with Trump, but Stephen said, no, they have their own rights, da 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 da, da. and then he changed himself. He said, no, 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 my point is supporting whatever you are saying. So in that sense, is changing the conversation. This can be echoed right into, into the writing assignments. So if you go through the writing assignments of these students, whenever it comes to identity, you see that they, they're trying to move from the margin into the center. Great. Uh, the other one is impossible. Know that uh, Spivak uh, proposes. In that sense that, uh, as far as I know, in the Constitution, you can go ahead and set up the flag of America to fire. But it's an impossible no. I mean, you're not supposed to do that. So there are many things in the world that are legal, they are all right, okay, but you're not supposed to do that. That's one of the impossible no's here. So yeah. eligibility of immigrants, so many political things. So can I just speak about Trump and give my side and give the other side? Is it okay or is it impossible no? Some people say no, US was built by illegal immigrants. So maybe this is true that US was built in many aspects by immigrants, either legal or illegal, but that's not a part of the speech of top politicians here in, the, in America. And maybe in the teaching machine, like ITU or any other academic institutions, that's not a part of discourse. So the construction with Derrida, uh, she talks about the construction not in the sense that we have any system, and when you find problems with the system, there's a major issue in the system, you go ahead and deconstruct it in order to reconstruct it without those flaws. But uh, in a sense that we should be dubious and suspicious about whatever is given to us, handed down to us. Like uh, as a tutor or as an instru instructor here at Intu, you would say that, okay, Chinese students, you hear from here and there that many Chinese students do not want to participate in discussions in the class. So that's one of the features of Chinese students. But these students from these countries are talkative, so maybe you can exploit it in your discussions and speaking classes, stuff like that. So this is handed down to you by other teachers, society, media, whatsoever. Now, what are my experiences here? That might be quite different. So some people say that all immigrants should be welcomed, legal or illegal. I say no, not all immigrants, because some of them might have some toxic intentions. So these toxic intentions is one of those concepts that need to be deconstructed. Because after this ban, I heard that we had many issues on campus regarding uh, uh, people who are from those banned countries and the others, and you know, all this racism surface, stuff like that, which is in the conversation, echo in the conversation. Yeah. And then the last one, I guess, is Foucault, power and knowledge. It doesn't believe that one leads to another, but there are two sides of a coin. Many people like Spivak believe that this power and knowledge is not is not worn, it is not built in conversation that we have, but rather it is exposed from outside. It is imposed from outside this conversation or this teaching machine. Like my thesis could be legal immigrants should be welcome, but illegal immigrants should not be permitted. So as a legal, knowledgeable like student, he is at the center and he is marginalizing elite those people who are illegal or um, are not literate. So people who are literate sit at the center, they have the power because of their knowledge. But those who do, do not, they are imposed to the margin, they're marginalized because <coughs> of the knowledge and the power over them. Alrighty. So uh, <clears throat> one thing I'd been interested in doing for, uh, let's see, we have another, at least one, one more sample right, right here, I gotta bet back up uh, is to sort of turn it over to, to you guys actually be 
before we even before we even look at this, uh, put on the lens just for a, just for a split second before we before we look at this because it's getting okay. It's 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 still a couple of days before Halloween and it's in mid afternoon. Everybody just had lunch and it's in a so as on oh the tryptophan's kicking in or so. Uh, <clears throat> so I I know well for me this was a this stems from a personal interest in sort of documenting everything that, that I'm doing in, in these meetings to sort of I have data to work with at a, at a future point in time and sort of in, improve student focus in, in, in instruction. Uh, do, do you guys feel like uh, something, this is something that you might apply to your own work, right? Even on a smaller scale, right? I think for students that might be, uh, I, I was actually thinking, I mean, this would be useful in any sense, but the thing that came to my mind is it could be really useful in working with students, particularly in like maybe counseling needs mm -hmm. uh, that you know are going through very stressful times to be able to try to pick up on some things that you might not necessarily hear in the conversation, mm -hmm. but you go back and review, and you have the language broken down to where uh, you can see it. I think the phonetic breakdown of the pauses, the, all the different things in there are extremely helpful for you to be able to analyze a conversation on paper mm -hmm. that you would only be able to pick up by listening to it. And so having it uh, transcribed in such a way like this, I think, can, can give you a lot more insight and you can quickly nav more quickly navigate through the information. That's true, right? And, uh, and I think one thing uh, I hadn't touched on earlier, I think when uh, CA was pioneered as a, as a technique, it was focusing on, let's say, uh, L1 speaker to L1 speaker. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, there's, there's, since then, there's been a body of research that's uh, L1 to L2 speaker, right? Uh, people speaking between second languages, or, or possibly even, still have to look at the literature a, a bit, uh, how in, it, it applies to speakers of other languages. But if you're talking about a counseling sit, situation where you know, extended pauses or, uh, or, the, or they're, they're just, their utterances are limited, right? It's like, let's say a learner has a very low level of, uh, of, of, of English, uh, and Right, just just being able to in interpret that. Ex if they say the word yes in a cu cu couple of different ways, does the second yes mean mean, mean something different because of the intonation or something? Uh, yeah, to help them when, when they're in crisis, which was the original intent of uh, the the genesis of this technique. Right? Yeah, the, the whole I mean the, the base of it, the analyzing of the conversation, because it just makes me think of like whenever you try to send somebody a text message and you're like inflection. It's not transferable via text, and so, but uh, because like, even when you said like what what it was in one of your first slides, I was like, well, like why did it need to be phonetic? And then as soon as you show the example, I was like, this makes complete sense. Uh, just like even thinking about like an advising session, where like if you um, if you're passing along your notes to a new advisor or something, like you can have your summaries and that's helpful information. But if there was a, if a full breakdown of the conversation with that kind of analysis to it, you, you immediately know how the conversation took place. Exactly. And you can kind of you can judge their or get an idea of their English of how their English knowledge is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because I'll be having you know advising sessions, and I'm thinking that the person's nodding, and going, yeah, and they're like, okay, could you just, just summarize so I can make sure you know what you're doing? For? Right. And they just go summarize. Yeah. Oh. Right. And so <laughs> it's like well, we've just spent a half an hour, <laughs> and we're we're at square one. So, That's right. Yeah. So. Watching that, looking at that's why I came is look at transcripts and getting just so I could get a little bit more knowledge when I'm speaking to someone and kind of understanding more. And I'm getting some more, I do engineering and computer science, and I'm starting to get more Chinese students. That's right. And, and so I want to try. <coughs> oh, we've got a Chinese student right here. I yeah, think we'll have so a few I'm minutes. To do. Yes, <laughs> specifically for this transcript. Uh, congratulations. It's, uh, no, I, I understand. Yes. Uh, Right, and seeing it how there's not always a one-to-one -one relation, or you're getting into uh, effective factors like the comp comprehension, yes, yes, or acknowledging, oh no, that doesn't mean I, I agree with you. I'm just acknowledging what you said, or right. uh, cult, uh, cult, cult, cultural di disconnects and everything. Um, but maybe I think I think we'll have enough time to just start looking at this. But let me also ask you. Uh, okay, so technically, when I recorded these conversations, I. My students were pretty agreeable. I always asked per permission so that they weren't scared that it, it wasn't. I wasn't grading the conversation. Oh, your first pair part is missing the second part. part. You, you don't. Uh, it's just as a meeting, but uh, they were agreeable to being audio recorded. Uh, now, 
for the full benefit of having to of CA you know, technically the uh, the, the video, vi having a video recording always helps but that to me seemed a little bit burdensome I, d I didn't want to go around video recording all of my student student meetings for for class what what's 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 your take on that audio recording or storing all this data uh, does it seem like a big sort of a bit Big, big thing to do, or that any sort of obstacles you can think of? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Well, I mean, the fact that you're recording, especially the video recorder, mm -hmm. um, it may have the observer effect. It mm -hmm. may affect what they say, how forthcoming they are, because they know they're being recorded. It may their effect, affect the naturalness of the conversation. Yes. Yeah, I think I think uh, I agree with, with what Matthew said. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, I think also uh, this is this process. Uh, uh, all the way through is cumbersome. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's helpful, but I think you have to be targeted with it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you have to have like a specific purpose. I think if this is mm -hmm. something that's using, like, say, tutoring sessions, for example, if like we said we're going to do this for all of our tutoring sessions, mm -hmm. uh, what would be the ultimate purpose? Um, and in my mind, it would be that well, we want to be able to kind of see how students are actually interacting. When are we going to review that? Who's going to be able to use that information? Mm -hmm. right. Is the tutor just going to review it every time they're done meeting with a student before a student comes in next? It's a lot of, you know, what's what's the ultimate goal of analyzing the conversation? True, um, right? And, so I th and that's, why I, that's why I first said about the, the counseling thing, where you have like a targeted at-risk mm -hmm. student um, to where you need to be able to have a quick shot analysis of reading the information. And that's why I think the audio is better than maybe even the video, because yes. the transcripts, you can just, you can read, well, it's not even listening, it's the, the written transcripts you can scan through. Even if it's an audio, you're going to have to sit and listen through the whole audio. If it's a video, you have to sit and watch the whole video from, you know, second by second, where reading, you can kind of scan through and understand what was happening. That's true, right? I, I recorded these conversations with some sort of long-term goal in mind. In fact, uh, and and I'm just, just now getting around to uh, transcribing, sort of an analyzing the data for possible f future use, and, it, and it's something that I'm, I'm just not doing th th this semester, sort of taking a break from that because I've got a that data set to work with. Um, so I say, like, how, how, how are we doing on time? We got two oh two oh five. Uh, another weird <laughs> conference every <I do> time. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make this as confusing as we can. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so uh, we have an, another student here, which I think the nature of the conversation is a. A li little bit different. I'm mean, not just for topic. In fact, uh, not just for for goals, but uh, if uh, we'll sort of, if you like, we can play and fo follow along with the with, with the transcript. And th this time, I'm not really giving you sa saying, okay, this person is a. Uh, this is what she's trying to accomplish in the conversation. Maybe, let's maybe uh, figure have a short time. Look, look at a little bit of it. And just see anything that you, you pick up on, just like sex was. How's that sound? Good. All right. All right. Going back to that's the one. Okay, so, so let's see. This is my I don't, I don't know if it's good or not. This is my out here in the front of the class, the YouTube sure. class. Okay, so this video. I follow the, you just show me the simple and I mm -hmm. and my idea about it. Okay, great. So, uh, so how, do you, how do you feel about it so, so far? Uh, for me, uh, and so recently at the start, I, I have no idea about it. and. Uh, uh, I read the same poll and I, I guess it came out before we talked about the mean aggression. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm almost interested about it, so I think, uh, I think we have some idea. So I, I try to make some plan for it. Mm -hmm. Some mean aggression, what kind of, or I try to find it on the, on the internet, mm -hmm. what kind of mean aggression, and I find a topic. So we talk about the immigration and says, I, I think not all the people think immigration is good for their own country, it's good mm -hmm. for their development. Mm -hmm. So uh, I pick up some body and uh, different, I, I, I choose some body topic. I don't know 
I, so this is almost, I, I think I want to talk with you about my body. Yes. Because I'm not sure it's it fit for the body, it's mm -hmm. comfortable. Mm, so. Okay. Mm. No, so uh, let's see. The, um, um, I think for the pieces and then and the body. Just take the piece, maybe a few minutes. Uh, and the freedom, the immigration. Okay, so maybe it's just a. Uh, so, take an immigration. It's an action that's taking away people's basic human rights. Uh, everyone needs freedom. Uh, okay, I. Immigration should not. I'm just gonna pause it right there. Uh, I'm tempted to say in our learner centered way, just uh, speak with the person next to you about what 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 you noticed, anything anything different. We can do it that way, or we can do it as a whole person discussion. Whole person discussion. That's a that's a student centered, audience centered, learner centered. Uh, you know, conducting the same sessions the, 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 the same way we're supposed to be teaching and tutoring and doing all these things. It's, it's all about you. It's it's a journey of self discovery. All right, uh, and, and Babak as well. And since if you noticed anything, I know this is one of the ones we looked at as, as closely. But yes, yeah, she had a lot more details. She was describing. It was yes. less like it seemed more like she was doing more of the talking. The other one, it was like kind of like both you guys were. Mm -hmm. This was more like she had a lot of details. Yes. And she had specific questions. So this meeting was probably easier because you knew what she wanted you to do. Yeah, she definitely came in with goals. It's the same kind of assignment as as the previous student, as as a doula, right? Um, and she surprised me, as as is the case with with the met with many students, right? That might be quiet in the classroom, and then once once you get into a one on one meeting, like kaboom, right? Look at this word count right here. I just uh, so it's some kind of leading question. I have. How do you feel about it so far? What was the most difficult thing, right? And there it is. Any other thoughts? Well, she really wanted to share her thought process with you. She wanted. She wanted to. Uh, she wanted you to know how she started her research and what's her concerns. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think uh, she wanted to be very open about it. I said this is how, where I started. This is where I think I want to go. I'm not sure. It, uh, I'm not sure. Speaking of, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure it's faithful. It's comfortable. I, I'm not. Yes, Anastasia. She she wants to also know that she's on the right track. She's like, this is what I've done. Did I waste my time? Like, you know, or am I like, you know, or am I like doing the right thing? Yes, sort of give, give, giving an account, giving the giving giving the backstory. Uh, and something I'm just noticing, I picked up somebody a different, I choose somebody topic. Uh, I don't think she's talking about plagiarism specifically, but, uh, but it's some topic that she possibly read in a textbook or something that was in her topic that was used before. Um, I, think, I think she might be referring to the fact that possibly, there are a lot of things on the internet, of course, and anyone can put anything like on the internet. So she's read a lot of information on the internet, trying to gather information for our paper, mm -hmm. but she's not sure uh, whether it's it's reliable inf information that's, that's mm -hmm. you know. So I, right, think, so I think she's questioning that. Mm -hmm. And I think when she says it's faithful, whether, I think what she, she may mean is that she, she's not sure whether this opinion is really backed up by real knowledge about it, or whether it's mm -hmm. just somebody. Right, whether it's uh, it, uh, possibly reliable, or she's searching for the, the right word to say about 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 the body, I'm not sure it's, uh, it matches the, the, the rest of the paper, everything. Um, right, yeah, so just coming in, coming in with questions, which is what we like to see, but right, for the meeting and tutoring sessions. Steven, did you, did you transcribe this yourself, or did you say you put it through a program? I, I had to type it. What was with this? I ran, put it into Audacity, put it down to half speed, and then just type, typed it uh, about as typing it about as fast as I can. I've been on the search for some kind of program where you can uh, audio transcription pro program that uh, you can plug it in, and then it'll give you a rough uh, transcript of what's be being said. I mean, obviously, it wouldn't wouldn't be perfect, but it'd be something I can work with. If, if you find one that is good for ESL teachers' budget, please let me know, because 
I, I mean, I know there are a number of ones that do that. Uh, there's something called Dragon. There's uh, there's yeah. others. Uh, I'm assuming that the, those transcripts we saw at the very beginning, the samples, those are all done by hand. Those aren't automated. The uh, the, the one with all the intonation. Yeah. Uh, that that's that, that that's correct, right? To get a transcript like that, yeah, it's it takes some close listening. I think the uh, a good rule of thumb is you have to know when to stop. Uh, because <laughs> you could spend an hour, well, I got these the perfect five lines, but right. my presentation's in five minutes and I still got 20 more pages to do it. So, yeah, it, that's, that's got one of the critiques of CA, I think, in, in general, just the amount of effort to, but to what end? You have to have tools like you said earlier. I think Google has a tool. I'm not sure, but. Google sort of Voice, like, perhaps? Or? Yeah. I, I, I did, did sort of look at that. Do you have to have a Google phone number in order for it to work? Or is it I have no idea. Possibly? Yeah, you can get a Google Voice number for free. Yeah, but everybody uses those for prank calls. And then it, uh, for prank calls? <laughs> yeah, colleagues will use them for it, but yeah, you can get them for free. You can also use them for businesses. Yeah, but having, I mean, to, if they can pick up yeah. different people, the conversation is yeah. transcribed with different If it's people. a phone conversation, it would be able to do that. I don't know if it would be able to do that. Because it will give you a detail, any voicemail, Google Voice, will give you a, a full printout. Um, so if you did it by phone, I don't know if you could trick it into doing it like by what it hears it. But that might be something to look into. Right, uh, just to see, uh, because yeah. in this case, we've got a lot of background audio with the, with the meetings as well, mostly. Uh, um, maybe speak. But I, I think we're just about to the end, right? So thank you all for coming, right? If you have any, yeah, if you have, have, have any questions, you know to where, where to find me. Just an email, right? I'm on the list. Somewhere in some directory somewhere, you know, I can find. Thank you. Thank you very much.